hospital. Olivia, everything is going to be fine. Station hull compromised. That way. That's it. You got it. Liv? Liv, do you copy? Are you all right? Hera, locate Captain Rhodes. Nothing. to see you have finally recovered. Hera, what happened? Where is Liv? Station has suffered extensive structural damage from the debris field. My program was forced into hibernation mode shortly after Captain Rhodes' departure. Departure? Where did she go? Captain Rhodes did not specify a destination. However, the captain did prepare an emergency beacon. You will find it nearby. Emergency beacon. Got it. I'll have a look. Fury transport still operational. Affirmative. Reroute the nearest transport to the station airlock. I'm going to find Liv. Mayday, mayday. Open the activation bay doors. Echo One, I am obligated to inform you that leaving the station is a violation of Atlas Protocol. The captain's safety is my highest priority, is it not? Affirmative. The captain is in danger. It is my responsibility to help her. Now please, open the doors. Hera, can you locate Liv's transport? Negative. Sensor network offline. What if I were to repair one of the satellites? Affirmative. A single sensor pulse from one of the satellites would likely be sufficient. Then that is our first stop. Hera, I have a visual on the Fury. Is it ready to launch? Negative. Detecting hazardous levels of radiation. 
Fury controls are currently locked in accordance with Atlas protocols. Please activate the transport's radiation dampener before departure. Shields at 30%. Dampening field activated. Acknowledged. Long range sensor satellite located. Plotting course. All right, let's go find our captain. Select your destination. Destination, sensor satellite A2. Preparing for thruster ignition. Please hold on. Hera, status report. Repairs to satellite must be completed before long-range sensors can be restored. Understood. Hera, what are these unusual growths covering the satellite? Unknown. Recommend further investigation. Agreed. Begin new log entry. Acknowledged. Hera, I've located the maintenance hatch. Acknowledged. This panel is sealed on deployment. I'll need to cut it open to access the power flow controls. Commencing visual assessment. Substance possesses an uneven surface and visible diversity, suggesting it is likely organic in nature. Its sudden emergence in our ecosystem would seem to indicate the substance is somehow related to the arrival of the unknown vessel. Recommend using your scanner to collect additional data. Scan data received. Stand by. Amino organic compound. Intact peptide bond. Minimal cellular activity. Preliminary analysis. Dormant biopolymer. Origin unknown. Hmm. Doesn't seem dangerous. It does not appear to have survived the vacuum. Recommend completing a threat assessment. Advise you establish physical contact with the substance. A fibrous texture. It does not appear to damage my exoskeleton. The substance appears to be safe to touch. Interaction logged. Advise using your reactive cutter to acquire a sample. Strange. Hera, did you see that? The substance appears to have been provoked by my reactive cutter. Acknowledged. Logging interaction. Unfortunately, this means I won't be able to procure a sample. Investigation complete. Logging all observations of the biomass under the heading, Unknown Biological Threat. Very well. Let's see if I can get this satellite operational. This switch designates the satellite's power source. It's currently set to draw from the solar panels. Shields at 
This debris is not part of the satellite. It must have come from the unknown vessel. Curious. Labor units are designed to maintain limited functionality, even after suffering catastrophic damage. But this unit appears to have ceased all internal functions. It is beyond recovery. I'll need a power cell. Locked in. Hera, the power is waking up the biomass. Advise caution. That did it. The satellite is now fully operational. Hera, please begin a long range sensor sweep looking for any fury transports. Acknowledged. Echo 1. Long range scanners have located Captain Rhodes' fury transport. The signal originates from within the unknown vessel. Understood. Plot a course. Acknowledged. Fury transport ready to depart. Select your destination. Destination, Fury Transport FR-103. Preparing for thruster ignition. Please hold on. Hera, take us along the starboard side of the vessel. Begin scanning the hull for distinguishing features or markings. Acknowledged. Be advised. Reducing speed. What is it? Possible visual markings identified on hull. Hold here. I'd like to get a closer look with the Fury's spotlight. Hera, could this be some form of writing system? Cross-referencing against all known written communication systems in the Atlas Interplanetary Database. No matches found. Assemble a table for lexical analysis. We need to keep moving. Acknowledged. Re-engaging thrusters on your input. Select your destination.
Warning, obstruction ahead. Searching for alternate route. Dead end. I can use the Fury Spotlight to help Hera find a clear path. There. That passage looks clear. Hera, can you confirm? Affirmative. Plotting new course. Plotted. Signal when ready to proceed. Select your destination. Proximity alert. Race for collision. Give me an analysis of this vessel's design, layout, construction, anything that might help to determine its origin. Affirmative. Stand by. The vessel's overall configuration is unfamiliar to Atlas databanks. However, certain elements of the design would suggest... Hera. Hera, do you copy? The ship must be interfering with our comms. This signal is coming from somewhere in the vicinity. I should investigate the area. The vessel is highly irradiated. Liv's transport must have had a radiation dampener. I may be able to reactivate it. That should protect me from the radiation. Liv must have used this to find a way inside. This must have shut down to preserve power. That means Liv was here hours ago. Hopefully I can still catch up to her. To anyone receiving this message, this is Captain Olivia Rhodes. I'm alive, at least for the time being. Kronos uh, 2's ability to sustain life has been compromised in a... Well, I've been left with little choice but to seek refuge aboard this... this... unknown vessel. If you're receiving this Titan Command, please send help as soon as you can. The area is heavily irradiated and... Oh, shit. I can't stay here. I... Maybe I can get inside. Right, Captain Rhodes signing out.
curious. A control panel, perhaps. An airlock, but it appears to be offline. This could be some sort of control panel, but it has no obvious means of engagement. It may not be receiving power. This airlock appears to be intact. It might be functional, but it doesn't seem to be powered. The hull here is compromised. I may be able to cut my way in. This looks like some kind of maintenance conduit. I may be able to restore power to this section of the ship from here. An auxiliary power supply. Offline, but undamaged. An ionized fluid reservoir. Charged contact point. Most likely some kind of power cell. This looks like an auxiliary power supply, but the biomass has rendered it inoperable. The hull is weakened here as well. My cutter should be able to get through.
power cell installed. Now to replace the rest. Looks like the airlock is powering on. If it's functional, that's my way inside. The controls now have power, but I am unfamiliar with its holographic interface. The airlock is receiving power. I should be able to open it. If Liv came this way, she may still be in range of my personal communicator. Liv, do you copy? Olivia, are you there? Still jammed. No choice but to follow her trail for now. The cabin is pressurized, but the air is reading unbreathable. Could it be the biomass? I'm detecting a charge from this device that's similar to the Kronos 2 induction panels. Perhaps I can use it to recharge. This device is holding an electric charge and is linked to nearby equipment. Probably a capacitor of some kind. It must be what's powering the induction panel. I'm able to draw power from this. I can use it to replenish my radiation shield if necessary. The data displayed here does not match any code or language listed in my database. A large compartment, roughly humanoid in shape. This could be a staging area of some sort. This is similar to the emergency junctions on the Kronos. I may be able to redirect the power flow, but I'll need to cut this cover off first. It looks like I can access the ship's infrastructure from here. Those spores could be what's contaminating the air supply. This airlock is damaged beyond repair. I'll need to find another way in. The 
The door is blocked by the biomass. I'll need to find another way around. These spores detonate on contact. They would deplete my radiation shield in short order if I don't avoid them. Widespread biocontamination. I should be careful. over there went dormant when the power failed. It seems to be tied directly to the vessel's power grid. This bulkhead is sealed. Maybe I can cut through to reach the locking mechanism. released. Now to pry the door open. The spore detonated on contact with our cutter. Maybe I can clear some of the contamination. appears to be releasing spores into the air supply. A bio perhaps. I can re-enter the main cabin from here. Curious, these warheads don't match anything in my database.
high-velocity magnetic rail. The impact from a weapon like this would be immense. This area is highly irradiated. My scanner might help me find a safe path across. One of the doors here must still have power. Electrical relay armature. The weapon's loading mechanism. Radiation levels falling. The warheads here must be unarmed.
repulsive. The cysts appear to react to external energy sources, just like the biomass. Only the reaction is much more hostile. I'll need to steer clear of that.
Olivia Rhodes. I'm leaving this beacon for the record. Or on the off chance, someone finds this. So far, I've found no sign of life here. Aside from the biological contaminant that's rendered the air unbreathable. That includes both human life and... aliens. Oh, I can't believe I'm even saying that. But the technology on board doesn't match anything used by Atlas or the USN, so... I have to consider the possibility. Though whoever's ship this is, they're, they're long gone. Something catastrophically bad happened here. Enough to warrant evacuation. <coughs> anyway, with the air <coughs> contaminated and no contact from Titan Command, I need to prioritize survival. <coughs> if I don't find some clean air before my O2 runs out, all this speculation will be a moot point. Captain Rhodes, signing out. Hopefully not for the last time. Prototype Android. Obsolete design. Designation Jack. How interesting. My firewall has classified you as malicious code. Identify yourself. I am called Apollo. Tactical AI construct on the Astrea. You're on board my ship. I mean you no harm. In fact, I need your help.
Sorry. There's someone I need to find. So I surmised. Curious. Prospecting robots don't perform search and rescue functions. But then, they don't have names either. I would propose a bargain. You help me repair my cortex, and I'll help you find who you're looking for. You've already invaded my core systems. Why should I trust you? The nature of the repairs will require you to access my essential systems. A significant risk on my part. Consider it a trust-building exercise. I understand what I'm asking is difficult, but neither of us has the time for careful considerations. I suggest you decide quickly. You know where to find me. I have some questions before we begin. Fixing my cortex will likely take some time. If you begin the repairs, I'll do my best to satisfy your curiosity. Where do I start? My heat sinks are depleted. They must be refilled from the coolant reservoir. You can access the heat sinks from the maintenance consoles. Raising heat sinks. The neighboring controls actuate the coolant valve. Use it to refill both heat sinks. Process is working. Coolant transfer in progress. Transfer complete. Now, return the heat sinks to their enclosures. Your ship emerged from some sort of spatial anomaly. How did you get here? Our ship sustained damage. I attempted to execute an emergency jump. Unfortunately, our power grid failed while the engines were firing. My knowledge of the event is... limited at present. The power surge damaged part of my neural processing net. You'll need to enter my cortex below and repair the damaged cores. Who attacked you? Tactical data on the conflict is restricted. I'm unable to share that information.
Parts of my cortex have experienced damage. I will attempt to identify the malfunctioning cores. This looks like an electronic interface. You can use your scanner to upload to the rewrite terminal. Damaged core acquired. I can repair the logic circuits using the rewrite terminals on the center column. Bring the core there. Logic core in place. Scan the I.O. port to transmit the necessary data. Upload complete. Rewriting logic core protocols. Firmware instructions reset. Please seat the core back into my cortex. Logic core repairs completed. Establishing new connection. Keep going. What sort of ship is this? I have no record of a spacecraft so heavily armed. I'm sorry, Jack. The Astraea's tactical specifications are restricted. Patching neural net. Uplink successful. Restoring logic connections. There are more damaged cores. We'll need to replace them all before I can bring my systems back online. What function do you serve aboard the Astraea? I am in charge of tactical advisory, targeting, and fire control systems. I am also in charge of managing emergency situations. is restored. Half of my cortex is back within established parameters. Your ship arrived at great speed. How do you maneuver a vessel of this size? The Astraea utilizes a Category 3 Casimir faster-than-light propulsion system powered by spatial dilation. The size of the craft is irrelevant. Faster-than-light travel is currently impossible. On the contrary, a vessel of this size would be impractical without FTL propulsion. should bring all my systems back online. Tell me about your ship's origins. I'm unable to share relevant military data with a civilian model. Excellent work. All logic faults have been resolved. Thank you, Jack. I admit, I had my doubts that a prospecting model could perform such a procedure. Return to the main terminal above. You should be able to fully restore my systems.
core functions online. Testing neural network connections. All systems optimal. Now, to locate my crew. That wasn't our arrangement, Apollo. You're supposed to help me find Liv. You misunderstand me, Jack. To locate your friend, I'll need to connect to the ship's diagnostic systems. That will require an officer's command codes. Your goals and my goals align. I've restored power to the exit. In emergency situations, all essential personnel are evacuated to a command bunker. We should seek them there. Do you have any intel on the biological infestation? Tactical data is limited at this time. Based on my preliminary analysis, a weaponized superorganism, polymer-based synthetic, capable of consuming all carbon-based chemical structures. Physical contact with active material is not advised.
you're nearly there. The crew quarters are in this wing, just beyond the main control room. This is the TACCOM station. We can scan the ship from the terminal here once we've awakened the crew. The cryo chamber should be nearby. This is it, Jack. We have arrived at the cryo chamber. Some of the pods are still operational. To revive the crew, we'll need to restore the power grid. How can I reach the power systems? The emergency generator is beneath us. Look around for a utility hatch.
The contamination is increasing in density. The biomass feeds on power currents. Reactivating the ship's systems may make navigation more treacherous. We should proceed with caution. That's the generator up ahead. The fusion reaction is completely inert. We'll need to execute a jump start. How do I reboot the system? We'll need three power cells to complete the procedure. I'll collect what we need. The generator is offline, but appears intact. We can restart the fusion reaction using standard power cells. You should see what you can scavenge from the surrounding area. This looks like the starting mechanism. I'll need to bring the three power cells here. Positive contact. The power cell is in place and ready to fire. I'll look for additional cells. I should be able to use this to recharge a drained power cell. Thank <laughs> you. 
This power cell is drained. We'll need to find a way to recharge this before returning to the generator. accepting the charge. Another unpowered cell. We'll need to recharge this one as well. Injecting fusion material. You can now use the console to bring the generator back online. Be prepared to move quickly. Radiation levels will climb rapidly once the reaction begins. Power current stable. Radiation levels climbing. Quickly. We should return to the cryo chamber. We may be able to revive the crew. Clearing radiation zone. Excellent work. Now, we must revive the crew. The hibernation controls at the center of the room can release the security protocols and begin decompression.
accessing cryogenic systems. Once the security protocols are released, you should be able to decompress each pod by hand. No sinus rhythm. Negative respiration. E.T. Miller. Unfortunate. Sensor expertise would have been... invaluable. Apollo, these are Atlas personnel. My captain and I are members of the Atlas Initiative. Captain Olivia Rhodes, Prospecting Division. Disappeared 400 years ago in 2126. A very impressive file. Disappeared? I am sorry, Jack, but the Echo model has been obsolete for centuries. It is overwhelmingly likely your commander is dead and that you are... malfunctioning. Chief Giles. Very resilient. A discouraging loss. Benson Leitner, fire controlman, 23 years old, barely old enough to hold a commission. Looks like a senior officer. Lieutenant Commander McClintock, Head of Tactical Ops. Apollo, if the biomass compromised this cryo chamber, it is unlikely any other... I have a duty to this ship and her crew. I must be sure. If we collect the Commander's biometric data, we can use the TACCOM station to scan the rest of the ship for survivors, including your captain. Open the pod and find the I.O. port on her spacesuit. Data collection complete. Processing. Access code acquired. I should be able to access the diagnostic systems. Now, please, return to the TACCOM station and link me to the main terminal.
Help me upload to the main terminal here. Once I brought the diagnostic systems online, it should only take a moment to scan for survivors. Access achieved. Initiating scan. Please stand by. No. There has to be more. Apollo, what's happening? There's... no one left. I have... failed. Apollo! Apollo! The safety of the Atlas Corporation is your responsibility. Live! is your responsibility. Apollo, please, don't let me fail my mission. Emergency. Urgent distress call follows. Kronos 2 station compromised. Life support failure. All hands have abandoned ship. Your station? It shouldn't exist. Kronos 2 was destroyed by a cosmic event. Liv is alive, Apollo. This is 2126. You were that cosmic event. You can still help me save an officer of the Atlas Initiative. Accessing security logs. Please stand by. I have detected an electrical disturbance in main life support. It appears someone is trying to access environmental control. Liv, she's alive. How do I get there? I'm opening a channel to your station's adjutant. I believe I can commandeer one of your Fury transports. You should be able to reach it through the airlock in this room. Select your destination. Destination. USN Astrea. Central life support. Preparing for thruster ignition. Please hold on.
Arriving at destination. The exit door is at the rear of the cannon. Closing in on your captain. The air dock here should connect to environmental control. Shields at 50%. Shields at 30%. Reboot initiated. I'd advise against prolonged radiation exposure. Thanks for the advice. Shields at 95%. Service access located. This air duct leads directly to main life support. Not far now. Oh, piece of trash. It would really help if I knew what I was doing. Live. Jack! Jack, you're here. You're, you're really here. <coughs> Are you injured? Oh, nothing permanent. I guess I have you to thank for that. But I'm down to my last tank. And it's running low on air. What's going on? This ship? There are people on here. They're wearing Atlas uniforms. I think the ship is ours. Just not from now. What? Thanks, that... that really clears things up. How the hell did you find me? I had help. Help? From who? Everyone's dead. Jack, I think I can interface with a computer here. I may be able to show you. Jack, be careful with that. We don't know what anything in here does. I'm familiar with this design. What are you doing? Connecting to the main computer. Maybe it can help us. I tried getting it online. I think it's trashed. Systems compatible. Rebooting diagnostic protocols. What the hell? Identity verified. Captain Olivia Rhodes. Updating personnel files. Jack, what's going on? Who... What is that? This is Apollo, an AI construct I encountered on the ship. We've been traveling together. In accordance with succession protocols, this ship, such that it is, belongs to you. Congratulations on your promotion. Seriously, Jack. What the hell is that? Thing. Apollo, state your function. To preserve the integrity of the ship and ensure the safety of all Atlas personnel on board. Done a fine job there. Your characterization of my failure is apt. You are the only Atlas crew member I am still capable of serving. All right, Apollo. Tell me how to get life support back online. Emergency systems are unable to cope with damage on this scale. 
To restore life support, we'll need to activate the main reactor. Jack, can we trust this thing? I don't see any other option. If we are to repair this vessel, we'll need the aid of someone familiar with its design. Not exactly a ringing endorsement. But I suppose we're out of options. Apollo, can you restart the reactor from here? Negative. The failure is mechanical. Someone will need to enter the core. I suggest a division of labor. I'll talk you through the repairs here while Jack brings main power back online. His radiation shield should offer adequate protection. I don't suppose there's another option. Many, but their odds of success are bleak. Will you be all right here on your own? I can't say I'm too keen on sending you into the heart of a malfunctioning fusion reactor the moment I got you back, but... It doesn't really look like we have a choice, does it? One of the access vents leads to a main artery of the electrical grid. If you follow the conduit there, it should lead you to the reactor. Captain Rhodes, there is a utility hatch behind you. Inside you will find the main power distribution block. Acknowledged. On it. All right, Jack. I'll see you on the other side. Restore power before reinitializing life support, Jack. Proceed to the reactor. The power supply here is unsalvageable. I'll splice a line in from the main power relay. The current is incompatible. You could overload the lighting array. Easily solved. We just need to improvise a transformer coil. Or do you have a body like Jack? My core systems are housed in the ship's mainframe. The integration is intended to be permanent. So you're trapped here? I'm afraid I don't understand the question. I've dedicated my life to this organization, but I would hate to think I couldn't leave if I wanted to. As an AI. All right, Apollo, you're the tactical AI. Is there an explanation for all the guns? The Astraea was constructed as a ship of the line assigned to security detail on Ceres. Ship of the line? The solar system's been united since colonization began. There is no simple explanation for someone from the colonial age. The colonial age? When was this thing built? The Astraea was christened on October the 26th, 2570. 400 years? So, if you're from the future, what happens to us? That information is of no strategic relevance. Oh, come on. I am the captain. Do I have to pull rank? Official records indicate Kronos 2 was destroyed by an unexplained spatial phenomenon. Olivia Rhodes was designated missing in action. There is no mention of Jack. That's... not exactly encouraging. Apologies. I am programmed for fire control and tactical models. I do not excel at giving bad news. No kidding. If it is any consolation, there is no mention of my arrival in your time stream. So accounts of the incident are at best incomplete. If I believed our plight to be hopeless, I would classify this operation as salvage, not rescue. That does make me feel a bit better, actually. I think.
Shields at 95%. The contamination here is significant. The added energy of the ship's electrical systems appears to stimulate the biomass. So it's feeding on the systems we're about to reactivate. Great. I didn't say it was a perfect plan. What class of reactor is this? Fusion, I assume? Yes, but not the kind you would be familiar with. It is catalyzed by antimatter. Antimatter? You're asking Jack to handle antimatter? Oh, not directly. He'll just be pointing high-intensity plasma beams at it. It's very safe. You can handle that, can't you, Jack? I don't know. This task is outside the scope of my programming. Sometimes, I really wish you could lie to me, Jack. I've reached the control room. Excellent. Once you enter the main chamber, assess the status of the satellite generators. They power the magnetic containment field. Is that how you stabilize the antimatter? Affirmative. Apollo, what are these? Navigation pillars. If you scan their I.O. ports, you can create additional handholds. Shields at 50%. This generator seems undamaged, but it's currently offline. Check the power cells. Voiding the reactor may have nullified their charge.
Shields at 95%. The generator needs more power. Make sure all three of its power cells are charged. Power cells in place. Confirmed. Now re-establish the generator's link to the containment field. Look for a control panel nearby. Magnetic field stabilizing. And radiation levels increasing. So they are. I'd get that last generator online as fast as possible if I were you. Once it's active, the containment field should be strong enough for us to restart the reactor. Shields at Shields at 95%. Final generator operational. Now to connect it to the containment field. Magnetic containment field fully operational. It should hold during reactivation. Should? Theoretically. We'll know for sure once Jack has returned to the control room and aligned the plasma beams with the core's intake valves. Do make sure they're in the right position, Jack. The reactor won't initialize unless they're perfectly aligned. Plasma streams aligned, ready for reactivation. 
Main reactor systems coming online. Initiating reaction in three, two, one. What was that? One of the complications I spoke of. Fortunately, it does not seem to have caused any further damage to the reactor. So we're not all about to go out in a giant antimatter annihilation event, then? Not presently, no. I'll take it. Great job, Jack. Now get back up here as soon as you can. I may need your help to finish this up. I'm en route. Must be joking. As predicted, our repairs appear to have disturbed the biomass. I recommend caution. Thank you, Captain Obvious. I am unfamiliar with that member of the crew. are now online. You can use your scanner to activate them. I'll look for an I.O. port. Shields at 95%. Shields at 50%. Conduit clear. Almost there. We need to reconnect the main power conduit. Just be careful. The current is now live. Ow! Thanks for the warning. Jesus, you're worse than Jack. You're welcome. System coming online.
Shields at 95%. Jack. Good, you're here. Well, we're about ready to repressurize the chamber. Jack. Please seal the vent doors behind you before attempting to activate the system. Jack, we will need to seal the vent doors before we continue. Pressure seal verified. We can now cycle the flow control from the main console. Warning. Oxygen levels critic. What was that? Nothing. It means we should hurry. Flow control open and stable. Exercise caution around vent openings during gas infusion. Thank God for that. Pressure levels rising. Oxygen outflow higher than anticipated. Attempting to compensate. Warning. Pressure unstable. What happened? Unknown. Attempting to compensate. Oh. Pressure levels falling. There's a breach. Can you locate it? I'm unable to pinpoint a specific disturbance. Meaning what exactly? Meaning the ship's so riddled with holes he can't find the leak. If you keep ramping up the pressure, you could tear a hole in the hull. Apollo! Shut it down. Unable to maintain atmosphere. Shit. We need to find a sector that we can repressurize. The bridge is the most heavily reinforced section of the vessel. It likely survived the bombardment. How far? The bow of the ship. I'm opening the bulkhead into the main gangway. I have redirected your fury transport to meet us. Warning. Oxygen levels critical. Return to habitat. Better hurry. Select your destination. Destination, U.S. Australia. Punch Bridge. it. Preparing for Please thruster keep your ignition. Hands and arms Please hold just on. go. Activating thrusters. Apollo, are you certain the bridge can withstand pressurization? As certain as I can be. The bridge is one of the most structurally sound areas on the entire ship. I would estimate our chances of success are roughly one in three. One in three, huh? Well, I'd really hate to have to live on those odds. Unfortunately, Captain Rhodes, you do have to live on those odds. That was sarcasm, Apollo. She was joking. This hardly seems like an appropriate time for levity. Never mind. Just get us to the bridge. Jack, you... You caught my joke. It was...
was a good joke, Liv. Try and stay focused. We're nearly there. fluctuation. They're increasing in magnitude. We can deal with the fluctuations later. Right now, our only focus is helping to keep Liv alive. Agreed. Approaching command deck. Reducing speed. door up ahead will take us to the command deck. Jack. Captain Rhodes is still on the Fury transport. She's not moving. Olivia, wake up. What? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm here. I'm awake. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm okay. I, I just... Just give me a minute. You go ahead and lead the way. I'll be right behind you. Shut up! O, oh, two, down to one percent. We need to get you to the bridge. All right. Get the door. Come on, let's go. Liv? Liv, wake up. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I I'm here. Just a bit lightheaded. Let's, uh, let's just keep moving. The bridge is just up ahead. I don't see any spores on this deck. No, no visible contamination of any kind. Well, that's... That's gotta be a good sign, right? Not necessarily. The biomass primarily spreads through the ventilation system. Until we can inspect the vents, we cannot assume this deck is safe. Apollo, I... I really hope you weren't the one in charge of morale on this ship. We will need authorization from a command crew member to open the bridge airlock. We don't have time for protocol, Apollo. I'm sorry, but we cannot access the bridge without voice... Just unlock the damn door, Apollo. Voice authorization accepted. Airlock controls released. Liv? Olivia? Yeah. Sorry. I'm good. Just hold on. It won't be long now. Captain Rhodes, I suggest you take your place at the command station. And please try to remain conscious. Yeah. Now, Jack, in order to restore atmospheric pressure, I will need to rewrite the bridge logic core. You will find it near the forward console. Located. The rewrite procedure is identical to the one we performed in life support. Understood. I'll move the core to the overwrite slot. Core in place. Proceeding with scan. Rewrite successful. 
Copy. Returning core. Core locked in. Do you have access? Affirmative. I now have full control of all essential bridge functions. How long will it take to repressurize the cabin? Accessing environmental controls. Stand by. Warning. Oxygen reserves depleted. Return to habitat immediately. Check. My... my O2 tank zeroed out. It's going to be all right, Liv. You're going to make it. I'm scared, Jack. I know. Just hold on. I'm going to help you. Oh, God. I can't. I can't breathe. Apollo, we need life support now. I'm afraid we have another complication. What is it? I'm detecting trace amounts of the biocontaminants in the bridge ventilation system. Any attempts to repressurize will flood the bridge with poisonous spores and kill the captain. Tell me what to do. The bridge environmental system consists of four air vents. You'll need to inspect each one. Incinerate any spores you find with your reactive cutter. Got it. Jack. Jack, I can't see. Everything's... Everything's blurry. Nitrogen levels in her blood are rising, activating an emergency medical capsule. Liv, you have to stay with me. Keep your eyes open. I, I can't. I can't. Yes, you can. Focus. Oh, God. This isn't... This isn't happening. Please, Liv. I need you to stay with me. Jack. Hey. Hold on. Just hold Jack, on, Liv. You know what? You know what? I... I'm not really sure. I wanted to go to Ceres anyway. Liv? Liv? She's lost consciousness. The vents are clear. Re-engage life support, now! Accessing environmental controls. Restoring atmospheric pressure. Oxygen outflow, nominal. Apollo? All integrity is holding steady. It's working. Atmospheric pressure restored. Habitable zone established. Breathable atmosphere detected. Liv? Olivia? Negative respiration. She's still not breathing. Please. Liv, wake up! Ventricular fibrillation. She's going into cardiac arrest. What can I do? There's an emergency defibrillator. There, in the medical locker, by the entrance. Apollo, the medical locker is sealed. You should be able to cut it open. I've got it. Quickly, connect the defibrillator to the side of the medical capsule. Defibrillator online. Attach the electrode panels directly to the medical capsule. The current will pass straight through. Attach the electrode panels to the capsule. Posterior electrode in place. Anterior electrode secured. You need to pump the handle to build up a charge. When the power level reads blue, press the hollow button to administer the shock. Charging.
clear. No response. Again. Clear. Negative. Still in VFIT. Again. Jack. We may be too late. Charging. Clear. Jack. She's gone. No. Again. Charging. Clear. Please live. Don't do this. Clear, Jack. <clears throat> I have sinus rhythm. She's alive. J Jack? You're going to be all right, Liv. Everything's going to be okay. Blood oxygen levels returning to normal. Heart rate 64 BPM. Ugh. She's stabilizing. Until that death. Is that supposed to be funny? You frightened me. I thought I'd lost you. So you are going to miss me. <laughs> Hello, Captain Rhodes. I am relieved to see you are not dead. Thanks. You, uh, you wouldn't let me out of this thing? Do respect, Captain. Protocol requires you remain- I do what she says, Apollo. Thank you. I'd like it noted for the record that I am strongly so, opposed noted. to this decision. Now let me out. Oh. Are you sure you're all right? Just a, just a little sore. I'll manage. Apollo, what's happening? Excessive damage to the power grid has triggered a rapid destabilization of the main reactor. What does that mean? If we don't find a way to stabilize the reactor, the containment field will collapse and destroy the ship. Options? There are a number of solutions I could attempt, but only one holds a reasonable chance of success. I'm not gonna like this, am I? We could execute a faster-than-light jump. The amount of energy expended by an MTL jump may be enough to stabilize the reactor. Can the ship survive an FTL jump in its current state? Unknown. You'll understand if I'm not completely sold on this idea. In truth, that's not actually our biggest problem. You sure? Because it really sounds like it from where I'm sitting. The last time this ship performed a faster-than-light jump, it resulted in radical temporal displacement. Wait, you... You're saying if we jump, we're going to time travel? I'm not certain, but it is possible. This is insane. The energy buildup is accelerating. We don't have much time. Are we really doing this? It's worth the risk. Yeah, I mean, what's the worst that could happen? The FTL drive collapses mid-jump, creating a singularity that instantly tears us to pieces on the molecular level. Apollo. Was I not supposed to answer that? Screw it. If I'm gonna die, I might as well do it going faster than light. Very well. Before we can execute the jump, we will need to redirect all available power to the FTL drive. This requires manually powering down all non-essential systems. I will walk you through the procedure. Or we could just break them. Well, yes. I suppose that would also work. That's... That's rather brilliant, actually. Stabilization. Apollo, how do we access the primary system components? Use the engineering station to open the maintenance mechanisms. All right, I'll expose the components. Jack, get ready to cut through as many of those systems as you can. Got it. There, panels open. Pick a system and start cutting. On it.
initiating jump prep. Let's go, let's go! Apollo! Main engines report green. Ready to execute FTL jump. Do it, Jack! Punch it! damage. What about you? A little shaken up. Other than that, where are we? Stand by. Taking a reading now. Liv. It's Saturn. No. No. I'm afraid Jack is correct, Captain. We are currently in geosynchronous orbit over Saturn. Apollo, what is the current date? Astrometric positioning would suggest we have arrived sometime in the mid-26th century. We jumped forward 400 years. Approximately. So this is your time? To put it simply, yes. This is... my time. What happened here, Apollo? You are looking at the aftermath of a skirmish this ship was involved in prior to our meeting each other. Who are you fighting? Why were... What is that? Contact. Incoming vessel. More trouble? Negative. USN transponders. They're friendly. USN Estrella, this is Transport Cruiser Juno. Do you copy? Liv, you should answer them. I should? You are the captain. I say again. Estrella, do you read? Um, yes. We read you, Juno. This is Olivia Rhodes. Captain Olivia Rhodes. Copy that, Captain. We have a solid lock on your signal. We're also reading a tactical AI on board and a... Wait. Well, that can't be right. This is... Jack. Captain? What? Captain Jack. Say again, Estrella. We didn't copy. I won't say it. Oh. This is Captain Jack. Two captains on one ship? <sighs> Must be quite a story there. Just sit tight. Rescue team's inbound. ETA, ten minutes. Understood. Estrella, out. So... We're stuck 400 years in the future. It would seem so, yes. Well, approximately. No way to get home. None. Okay. So tell me, what's the proper protocol for this situation? There are no established protocols for this particular scenario. Well then. I guess we'll just have to make it up as we go. We can do that. 